The MP3 player module is among the most popular in the microcontroller community, renowned for its affordability and user-friendly operation. It's an excellent choice for hobbyists who seek reliable audio integration without complexity in their projects. This is my third video on this MP3 module. In this video, we will look at a feature often overlooked, the buzzy pin, allowing clear indication of when a module is actively playing an audio file. We can take advantage of that feature in our code to do something interesting while sound is being played. For example, synchronization of audio with visuals, audio playback management, triggering actions post playback, power saving, user interface feedback, the potential applications are limitless. Let's see how to harness this feature. Let's begin by wiring the components. We will use an Arduino Uno, the MP3 module and a speaker with a maximum of 3 watts. So the VCC pin of the module is connected to the 5V pin on the UNO. The RX pin is connected to one end of a 1 kilo ohm resistor and the other end of the resistor is connected to pin 11 on the UNO. The TX pin is connected to pin 10 on the UNO. The ground pin of the module is connected to the ground pin on the UNO. The SPK pin of the module is connected to one terminal of the speaker. The other SPK pin is connected to the other terminal of the speaker. The wiring is now complete. Here is how the assembled circuit looks on my breadboard. Next, let's put some audio files on a micro SD card. I am using a 30 GB micro SD card, which is the maximum capacity that the MP3 module can handle. You're free to use a card with less storage, but make sure not to exceed the 32 GB limit. The micro SD card must be formatted as FAT16 or FAT32. For formatting the micro SD card, I recommend using the Tuxera SD card formatter software. I have put the link in the video description. Select your card, make sure Quick Format is selected, and click Format to start the formatting process, which is very fast. Now you can pick any audio files you like as long as they are MP3 or WAV files. I am a Star Wars enthusiast, so I pick my audio files from this website. Here is my selection of Star Wars sounds in the left window, and on the right is my empty USB drive. Now the order in which you copy them is important because the MP3 module do not reference audio files by file names, but by number. So the first file you copy will be referenced as file number one, the second as file number two, and so forth. To verify the order, you can sort the files on your SD card by date created. This will display them in the exact sequence they will be referenced by the MP3 module. So this audio file will be referenced as file number 1 in our code, this one as file number 2, and for example the last one as file number 7. Now eject your micro SD card from Windows and insert it into your MP3 module. Now let's write some code in the Arduino IDE to see if everything is working fine before moving forward. I am going to select my board, which is a Nuno board on the country port. We need to install the library for the MP3 module. Go to the library manager and search for DF player. Scroll down a little bit in the list and install this one, the DF robot DF player mini. At the top of the sketch, we need to include two files. First is the software serial library for serial communications with the MP3 module. And the second is the library we just installed. For serial communications, define the RX pin which is on pin 10 and the TX pin which is on pin 11 on the Arduino Uno. Next, we instantiate the object that we will use to interact with the MP3 module. Let's name it MP3. We also need to create an object for serial communication emulated in software. 
In the setup function, we open the serial port for communication with the Arduino Uno board. We also need to create the serial software emulator object and pass as parameters the RX and TX pins. The serial software emulator is initialized for communication at 9600 bow, which is the speed supported by the MP3 module. Let's print the message on the serial monitor to indicate that the MP3 player is initializing. We need to start it by passing as parameters the software emulator object, true for enabling and shaking, and false to prevent the MP3 module from resetting which avoids a loud pop in the speaker when the module powers up. Now let's write a message on the serial monitor if the initialization of the MP3 module fails. We'll enter an infinite loop using a while loop, because executing the rest of the code is futile if the MP3 module isn't functioning. If the MP3 module starts normally, we'll print a confirmation message on the serial monitor. Then we'll set the volume to 25. Note that the maximum volume is 30, and you can adjust it from 0 to 30. Next, we'll play the first audio file on the SD card to test if the wiring and setup is working correctly. Before uploading the code to the board, let's compile it to check for any coding errors. No errors, everything is good to go. Let's upload the code you should hear your first audio file being played. If not, open the serial monitor to see if the MP3 player failed to initialize and double check your wiring. To see the buzzy pin in action, I will connect an LED between the buzzy pin and ground. This will be our visual indicator. When no audio file is being played, the buzzy pin remains high. The LED is lit. This is the module default state. Now let's reset the UNO. As you saw when the module is playing the audio file, the LED is turned off, meaning that the buzzy pin shifts to a low value. To use it in our code, Let's connect the buzzy pin to pin 8 on the Arduino Uno. This will be our input pin to monitor the buzzy signal coming from the MP3 module. Now let's see what we need to do in the code to use it. First, let's create a function in it MP3 and move all the code to initialize the MP3 module in this function. We call this new function into the setup function. So now our setup is easier to read. To use the buzzy signal, we need to define the pin used for input on the UNO, which is pin 8. To see it in action, let's write some code in the loop function. First, we read the value of the buzzy pin. Then, we write this value on the serial monitor to see it. Let's upload the code to the UNO. On the serial monitor, a buzzy pin value of 1 indicates silence and upon resetting the UNO, the value changes to zero as the audio file plays. Now let's make the built-in LED of the UNO blink when a sound is played. First, we create a function read buzzy pin and move the code in the loop to this new function. It will return the value of the buzzy pin. In the setup, we define the built-in LED as an output. After the command to play the first audio file, we read the buzzy pin and loop while it remains high, meaning we wait for the audio file to start playing. After that, while the buzzy pin is low, so as the audio file is playing, we first lit the built-in LED, wait for 100 milliseconds, and turn it off and wait again for 100 milliseconds. This will make the built-in LED of the UNO blink. Let's print the message on the serial monitor when the audio file start playing and another one when the audio file stop playing. Let's compile the code to see if there are any errors. Everything is good to go, let's upload it. You can see the built-in LED of the UNO blinking while the sound is playing and the serial monitor shows the buzzy pin low when it is playing. 
Now let's do something more interesting with the buzzy pin by making a strip of NeoPixels illuminate when an audio file is playing. Here is the wiring of the NeoPixels, which must be powered by a separate 5V power source and not by the UNO 5V pin. That's because NeoPixels draw a lot of current and we could arm the UNO. So the 5V power supply is connected to the first 5V pad on the NeoPixels. We have to connect the ground to both the UNO and the NeoPixels. All the components share the same ground. The first pad of the data line on the NeoPixels is connected to pin 7 on the UNO. So the UNO is powered through its 5V USB port, while the NeoPixels are independently powered by a separate 5V DC source. Here's the setup on my breadboard. Alongside my DC power source, that supplies 5V to the new pixels. Let's switch to the Arduino IDE to light up the new pixels when sound is playing. Go to the library manager and search for new pixel. Scroll down and install the Adafruit new pixel library. We must include the library at the top of the sketch. We define variables for the new pixels. The pixel data pin, which is connected to pin 7 on the Uno the number of pixels in the NeoPixel strip. In my case, I have 14 NeoPixels. Next, I create a NeoPixel object that I call Pixels, with parameters the number of pixels, the NeoPixel data pane, and the NeoPixel type. Let's define the cyan color. Its RGB values are 0, 255, and 255. We need to create two functions after the main loop. The initPixels function to initialize the new pixel strip. Then a function to light a random number of pixels, mimicking sound levels. I clear the new pixel strip each time because I am going to call this function repeatedly. In the setup function, I call the initPixels function to initialize the new pixel strip. Now let's command these lines when a sound is playing. Instead, we are going to call the show pixel random level function and wait for 60 milliseconds. Now let's compile the code to see if I made any errors. No errors, perfect. Let's upload the code to the UNO board. Now the new pixel strip appears to simulate sound level when an audio file is playing. I think we have a problem. Let me see your identification. You can find the complete source code in my GitHub repository. The link is provided in the video description. I'd love to hear your experiences with using the buzzy pin in your projects, especially in obstacles you have faced. Your input is greatly valued. Also, drop a comment to let me know if you've made it this far in the video. I'm curious to see who's watched all the way to the end. Thank you so much for watching.